A Japanese restaurant owner has paid a record $3.1 million for a single Pacific bluefin tuna. Now, bluefin tunas are known to be expensive, but a New Year's auction in Tokyo over the weekend saw numbers reach new highs. Found in the Pacific, Indian and Atlantic Oceans, the bluefin tuna is the most expensive and sought-after fish in the world, reaching outstanding lengths of up to 13 feet and weighing up to a staggering 2,000 pounds this seafood delicacy costs anywhere from $20 to $5,000 per pound. But why are they so expensive? What exactly makes them such a delicacy? In the past, people used to catch young tuna from the wild, raise them, and breed them for tuna farming. How do fishermen catch millions of these fish across the vast ocean? From cutting-edge technology to traditional techniques. Join us as we look into how fishermen and farmers make millions from bluefin tuna. In the world of seafood, the bluefin tuna is a majestic and highly prized fish. What I'm looking at right now is a 111 pound big eye tuna, and I'm looking at a really nice quality fish right here. That holds a significant place in both marine ecosystems and human culture. See, renowned for its impressive size, incredible speed, and delectable taste, the bluefin tuna is a wonder to scientists, fishermen, and of course, seafood enthusiasts alike. Known for creating some of the most mouthwatering sushi known to the earth, the bluefin tuna species comprises three main types. The Atlantic bluefin, Thunus thinus, the Pacific bluefin, Thunus orientalis, and the Southern bluefin, Thunus macoyi. Although all are still part of the bluefin family. These different species vary slightly in size, habitat preferences, and migratory patterns but they share many common characteristics and are still one of the most expensive aquatic delicacies on the market today. When it comes to the bluefin tuna, one of its most famous characteristics is its outstanding migration pattern. These fish are highly migratory and as such can be found in both temperate and tropical waters around the world. Preferring habitats with abundant prey, such as small fish, squid and crustaceans, these underwater gold mines are often found in offshore waters along continental shelves and near oceanic currents. Although it might seem like the bluefin can be found just about anywhere, this is very far from the truth, as these fish actually exhibit an extensive migration pattern, which makes their population exceedingly hard to predict. See, traveling thousands of miles between their spawning grounds and feeding areas, the bluefin tuna's migratory behavior actually poses challenges for fishers because of their unpredictable movements, wide geographic range, variable timing, and insane competitive pressure. For example, Atlantic bluefin tuna actually spawn in the Gulf of Mexico in the Mediterranean Sea before migrating all the way to feeding grounds in the North Atlantic. Another example is the Pacific bluefin tuna, which follows a similar pattern, spawning in the Western Pacific Ocean and migrating to foraging areas along the coast of North America and Japan. But how's this possible? Well, perhaps one of the most remarkable traits of these traveling delicacies is their incredible swimming speed and endurance. These powerful predators can reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour and have been known to cross entire oceans in their annual migrations. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, as the bluefin tuna also possesses a unique physiological adaptation known as a reet mirabile, which helps them regulate their body temperature and maintain peak performance in various water temperatures, meaning regardless of the environment they find themselves in, the bluefin tuna will still be able to survive and function properly, unlike other tunas like the yellowfin tuna, skipjack tuna, and albacore tuna. Today, the bluefin tuna is among the largest and longest lived fish in the ocean. And depending on the species, they can grow to lengths exceeding 10 feet and weigh over 1,000 pounds. Sadly, despite their impressive size, bluefin tuna actually have relatively short lifespans, typically living for around 15 to 30 years. When it comes to importance, the bluefin tuna's value and rarity stem from a number of factors. First, these fish are subject to high market demand, 
particularly in sushi markets, which has sadly led to overfishing and the depletion of their populations worldwide. Besides this, their slow growth rate and late maturity make them particularly vulnerable to overexploitation, which is a serious issue as their crucial role in marine ecosystems as top predators means that the decline of bluefin tuna populations can have cascading effects on entire ocean ecosystems. Essentially, bluefin tuna are truly remarkable creatures with a rich tapestry of traits, habitats, and behaviors. Their presence or absence strikes a huge blow to both marine ecosystems and the communities that rely on these magnificent fish. But how are these gold mines farmed? And how exactly do fishers all around the world go about capturing one of the most expensive creatures to swim in our oceans? Stay tuned to find out. A purse seine is a fishing gear designed to scoop up massive schools of fish. This mighty net has a long wall of netting held afloat by a line of floats just like a swimming pool noodle. But unlike your pool noodle, it's also weighted below by another line to keep the net nice and deep. The secret weapon is that it rings along the bottom and closes shut like a purse drawstring. When a school of fish swims into the net, the purse line is pulled tight, keeping the bottom closed and trapping the fish inside. This technique is super effective for catching all sorts of big and small fish that love to swim in close-knit groups. This net targets fish that like to hang out near the surface, especially in warmer waters. Think of young tuna, skipjack, and even some more petite guys like frigate tuna. They're all looking for yummy bait fish near the top layer of the water, and that's where the purse seine comes in. In colder waters, things can change a bit. Purse seine nets can also catch juvenile bluefin tuna when munching on bait fish near the surface. But sometimes these nets target the big fish too. Have you ever heard of tuna spawning? That's when they come up to the surface to mate, and purse seines can be used to catch them then. Here's the technical stuff behind this net. It's massive, 1,500 to 2,000 meters long, and up to 250 meters deep. The holes in the net are about 12 centimeters wide, and it has floats at the top to keep it bobbing near the surface, just like a giant pool noodle. At the bottom, weights and unique rings connect to a closing line. When the net is full of fish, they pull this line tight, like closing a purse shut, and the fish are trapped. There are also smaller purse seines used closer to shore for less industrial fishing operations. These target smaller fish and are sometimes used to catch other schooling fish like sardines and anchovies, depending on the season. Tuna purse signers come in all shapes and sizes, but the industrial ones are massive beasts, stretching anywhere from 45 meters to over 100 meters long. That's like putting three football fields end to end. These purse signers are decked out with all the bells and whistles. They've got a big boat called a skiff that helps haul in the net, sometimes even a few speedboats for extra muscle. And get this, some even have helicopters to spot schools of tuna from way up high. Talk about high-tech fishing. Now, closer to shore, you'll see smaller purse seiners. Depending on the season, these are around 20 to 50 meters long and tackle smaller fish, like juvenile tuna or even sardines and mackerel. They're kind of multi-tool boats ready for whatever fishy situation comes their way. All these purse seines have in common is this crazy strong winch called a power block. Imagine a giant crank that pulls in the bottom of the net like tightening a drawstring on a massive bag of fish. These purse seines can target fish in the deep ocean and closer to shore. They can go after fish down to 300 meters deep, but usually they focus on shallower depths, especially those prime tuna hangouts less than 70 meters down. Now to catch all these fish, purse signers go through a process called a set. It's like one big fishing operation from launching the net to hauling the catch back on board. This method is very effective, but it's barely in use anymore. But this isn't the only method for bluefin tuna fishing. Let's move to the others. Now that we've discussed one method of bluefin tuna fishing, are there other better methods than this? Is bycatch just accustomed to this method? Or are there other methods that have this con? Stay with us to find out.
The capture of bluefin tuna, a highly prized fish species, presents a significant logistical challenge due to their migratory nature and vast ocean habitats. Modern fishing vessels, however, have emerged as marvels of technological innovation, employing sophisticated equipment to locate and harvest these elusive creatures efficiently. This report explores the cutting-edge sonar systems and specialized fishing gear that empower modern vessels to navigate the open ocean and secure significant bluefin tuna successfully catches. For example, we have advanced sonar technology. Modern fishing vessels eliminate the inherent uncertainty of open ocean fishing by utilizing advanced sonar systems, essentially underwater eyes that paint a detailed picture of the marine environment. These systems emit sound waves that bounce off objects and return, creating a real-time image of the seabed and any denizens swimming within. Moving on, we have the multi-beam sonar. This technology constructs a three-dimensional representation of the seabed, allowing captains to identify underwater structures such as canyons and seamounts, locations known to attract bluefin tuna. We also have the side-scan sonar, which functions similarly to a high-tech X-ray. Side-scan sonar scans the vessel's flanks, revealing schools of fish swimming alongside. Then, the acoustic fish finder. These targeted sonars emit high-frequency sound waves designed to detect schools of fish at varying depths. This allows crews to pinpoint bluefin tuna schools swimming beneath the surface. Once a school of bluefin tuna is located, the operation transitions from detection to capture. Modern vessels have specialized fishing gear designed to maximize catch efficiency. First, we have the fish aggregating devices, FADs. These devices act as underwater floating restaurants, attracting bluefin tuna with the promise of food. Modern FADs are equipped with GPS trackers and environmental sensors, allowing crews to monitor their location and effectiveness in attracting fish. Another technology is optimizing catch management. The pursuit of bluefin tuna goes beyond location and capture. Modern vessels utilize various technologies to ensure efficient handling and maintain the high quality of the catch. Automated baiting systems are also another modern technology in fish baiting. These systems streamline the laborious process of baiting long lines. They ensure consistent bait placement, saving valuable time at sea. Then the onboard processing facilities. These modern vessels often house built-in processing plants. These facilities enable immediate cleaning, gutting, and freezing of the catch. This rapid processing ensures the highest quality of the tuna, maximizing its market value. Lastly, there is the climate-controlled holds. Once processed, the tuna is stored in vast, temperature-controlled holds. These holds maintain sub-zero temperatures, preserving the freshness of the catch for the extended journey back to port. The technological landscape of modern fishing vessels is constantly evolving. The focus extends beyond efficiency to encompass sustainability. Researchers are developing sonar technologies to differentiate between target fish and bycatch species. This allows for more selective fishing practices, minimizing unintended catches. Additionally, gear design advancements minimize accidental catches and promote a healthier ocean environment. Having discussed the methods of catching bluefin tuna, we are left pondering how fishermen know when to go fishing. How do they know which area of the sea is more populated? Come with us as we discuss bluefin tuna fish's seasonal migration and spawning. The Atlantic and Pacific bluefin tuna, Thunus thinus and Thunus orientalis, respectively, are apex predators renowned for their exquisite flesh and remarkable migratory feats. These powerful fish undertake annual journeys spanning thousands of kilometers across vast ocean expanses, driven by a relentless pursuit of optimal feeding grounds and suitable breeding habitats. Talking about the complexities of bluefin tuna migration patterns is critical for appreciating their resilience 
and ensuring the sustainability of commercial fisheries that target these iconic species. Prices. So there's an opportunity to support that supply and take the pressure. Atlantic and Pacific bluefin tuna populations exhibit distinct migration patterns, each a testament to their sophisticated navigational abilities. Atlantic Odyssey. As winter relinquishes its grip on the western North Atlantic, primarily near Florida and the Caribbean, adult bluefin tuna emerge from a spawning dormancy. Bluefin tuna is one of the most amazing fish, in fact, one of the most amazing animals in the world. It's one of the very biggest fish in the ocean. Warmer water temperatures and a surge in hunger trigger a northward migration. Feeding frenzy in the North Atlantic, summer months witness bluefin tuna feasting in the nutrient-rich feeding grounds of the Grand Banks region in the Norwegian Sea. Here they consume large quantities of herring, mackerel, and sand lands, accumulating fat reserves essential for their upcoming journeys. Southward return, with the arrival of autumn and bellies full of energy-rich prey, bluefin tuna initiate their southward migration. This journey leads them back to the warmer waters of the Mediterranean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, where spawning activities occur. Pacific Passage, young Pacific bluefin tuna, born in the balmy waters off the coast of Japan, embark on a remarkable westward migration around the age of one year. Leveraging the power of ocean currents, they traverse the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. Hours later, they were heading back to Orange Beach Marina with a monster bluefin tuna. Eventually reaching the bountiful feeding grounds off the coasts of California and Mexico. This westward journey can cover distances exceeding 5,000 kilometers. Years of growth in the Eastern Pacific. These young tuna spend several years in the Eastern Pacific, living on nutrient-rich prey like sardines and squid. During this period, they mature and experience significant growth. The return to the West, upon reaching sexual maturity, typically around seven years of age, Pacific bluefin tuna undertake an eastward migration back to the Western Pacific. Similar to their initial migration, this return trip is facilitated by ocean currents and likely guided by an internal compass and memory of their natal grounds. Knowledge of bluefin tuna migrations plays a vital role in commercial fishing practices. By understanding these fish's seasonal movements and preferred feeding grounds, fisheries can target large schools with greater efficiency. The return of the blue finna tuna to UK waters. They're using high-tech acoustic tracking devices for the project. Fisheries leverages historical migration data, water temperature fluctuations, and ocean current patterns to predict the movements of bluefin tuna schools. Moving on, fishing fleets strategically position themselves in critical areas along the migration routes. Such as the feeding grounds off the coasts of North America and Europe, where schools of bluefin tuna congregate in high densities. The seasons for fishing are often established based on the migration patterns of bluefin tuna populations. This approach allows for some protection of spawning grounds and vulnerable age groups. However, the reliance on predictable migrations can challenge the long-term sustainability of bluefin tuna populations. Overfishing during peak migration periods can exert immense pressure on the species. Responsible management practices, including quotas and seasonal restrictions, are crucial to ensure healthy bluefin tuna populations for future generations. The world of bluefin tuna migration extends beyond these broad seasonal movements. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is the government agency tasked with monitoring everything from climate change and weather. Research suggests that these fish exhibit complex behaviors during their journeys. Some evidence indicates that they may undertake deep dives exceeding 3,000 feet, potentially to avoid predators or access cooler nutrient-rich waters. Additionally, Researchers are actively investigating the role of social interactions and communication in guiding their migrations. But with these migrations becoming increasingly predictable, 
Are we simply creating a moving target for overfishing? As we learn more about their complex migrations, can we develop sustainable fishing practices that respect these epic journeys and ensure the continued existence of bluefin tuna fish? Tuna, a culinary delight gracing plates worldwide, faces a growing challenge overfishing. The immense demand for this popular seafood has put immense pressure on tuna stocks. Now, bluefin tunas are known to be expensive, but a New Year's auction in Tokyo over the weekend saw numbers reach new highs, a sushi chain owner. Particularly in regions with prevalent industrial fishing practices. This has led to a worrying decline in certain species, like the iconic bluefin tuna. Can these populations recover? The picture of tuna isn't uniformly bleak. Thanks to improved management and conservation efforts, some species show signs of population rebounds. However, others like the Pacific bluefin tuna remain heavily depleted due to overfishing. This critical situation demands stricter regulations and global cooperation to safeguard these vulnerable fish. The key to a sustainable future for tuna lies in adopting eco-friendly fishing practices that maintain the delicate balance of marine ecosystems. Here's where methods like pole and line fishing come in. Using a single line and hook, this technique offers a highly targeted approach. Not only does it minimize bycatch of unintended species, but it also allows fishermen to release unwanted fish, ultimately contributing to overall tuna stock health. Another champion of sustainability is fad-free fishing. Fads, or fish aggregating devices, are essentially floating magnets for fish. While effective at attracting tuna, they often result in the unintended capture of juveniles and other marine life. By eliminating fads, fishermen minimize bycatch and lessen their environmental impact. This, in turn, supports tuna conservation by allowing them to reach maturity and reproduce, ensuring the species' long-term health. The fight for sustainable tuna goes beyond fishing methods. Innovative gear is also important. Biodegradable fishing lines and hooks break down naturally, reducing the risk of ghost fishing, lost gear that continues to trap unsuspecting creatures. Non-entangling fads attract tuna without harming them, further minimizing bycatch. These advancements are a win-win for tuna and the environment, reducing ocean plastic pollution. Time and area closures are another powerful tool. By strategically designating periods and zones where fishing is off limits, we create safe havens for tuna to breed and feed. These closures allow populations to rebound naturally, ensuring a healthy future for the species. This proactive approach demonstrates the fishing industry's commitment to sustainability, safeguarding tuna for generations to come. As the global affair with tuna continues, ensuring its long-term availability requires close attention. Strict monitoring and regulations are crucial to prevent overfishing and protect the delicate balance of our oceans. Technology plays a starring role in this effort. Imagine satellites and vessel monitoring systems acting as watchful eyes, tracking fishing boats, and ensuring they stay within designated areas and catch limits. This real-time monitoring helps prevent illegal, unreported, and unregulated IUU fishing, a sneaky practice that threatens both tuna populations and the rich tapestry of marine life. But technology isn't the only solution. International and regional organizations have also stepped in, establishing regulations to manage tuna stocks responsibly. These regulations act as guidelines, including catch limits, size restrictions on caught fish, and seasonal closures to protect spawning grounds. When these boundaries are set, the goal is to maintain healthy tuna populations while minimizing the impact on other marine species and their habitats would be possible. By embracing these eco-friendly practices, the fishing industry can be a champion for healthy oceans and ensure a thriving future for this valuable resource, tuna. Commercial tuna longlining employs a sophisticated method to target these prized fish in their oceanic habitat. The core equipment is the longline, composed of individual units often called baskets. 
Each basket has a central line stretching horizontally between 250 and 800 meters. Suspended from this main line are four to 15 branch lines, each equipped with a wire leader and a baited hook. Achieving the optimal depth for hook placement is critical for successful tuna capture. Long line depth can be controlled through a combination of factors. The primary method involves adjusting the intervals between floats on the main line. Additionally, float line length and deployment speed can influence depth somewhat. Finally, branch line length can offer some fine tuning for specific target depths. Industrial tuna longliners are substantial vessels, typically 30 to 70 meters long. These specialized craft are designed to meet the demanding requirements of offshore tuna fishing. Imagine a long line stretching for hundreds of meters across the deep blue. That's the essence of long lining. These lines aren't just dangling in the water. They're rigged with baited hooks, targeting tuna swimming in the subsurface zones, anywhere from 100 to 300 meters deep. There are two main types of long lines, conventional and deep. Conventional lines target shallower depths around 175 meters, while deep long lines can reach 300 meters. Pretty impressive, right? Now this isn't a one hook operation. A typical long line setup involves hundreds of these baited hooks connected in sections. Buoys are attached at intervals to keep the line afloat. This massive setup can have over 3,000 hooks. It's important to remember that long lining is a complex operation. A Japanese restaurant owner has paid a record $3.1 million for single Pacific bluefin tuna. The specifics of how it's done can vary depending on the size of the boat, the equipment they have, and even the weather conditions. But the basic idea is the same. Cast out a giant underwater hook line and wait for the tuna to come swimming by for a tasty snack. Did you know a whole fleet of fishing vessels specifically targeting tuna? However, these aren't your average fishing boats. We're talking about industrial-sized operations using the tuna longlining technique. This method has a long history, and the Japanese perfected it in the 1930s. Initially, they used longlines to catch yellowfin tuna and albacore for the booming U.S. canning industry. But times changed, and by the 1970s, the focus shifted to bluefin tuna, which now makes up over 60% of their catch. Economics plays a significant role in fishing. Today, tuna longlining is a global operation. Countries like Taiwan, Korea, Indonesia, and even the U.S. have fleets using this technique. It's become a widespread way to catch tuna across the world's oceans, from the Indian to the Pacific. The thing is, tuna is important commercially. They're swimming worldwide in tropical and temperate waters, and longlining allows anglers to target them in these vast areas. Places like the Eastern Pacific and the Indian Ocean are prime tuna grounds, with longline fleets setting up shop to catch these valuable fish. But it's not all sunshine. Tuna longlining, like many fishing methods, has some environmental drawbacks. Sometimes unintended catches happen. These are called bycatch. They can include things like young fish, other species like sharks, and even endangered animals like sea turtles and birds. This is something we want to minimize. The good news is that bycatch doesn't have to be a huge problem. There are a bunch of intelligent practices anglers can use to reduce it significantly. These are like fishing best practices that help protect the ocean while still catching tuna. Think of it like this. Unlike some complex fishing issues, reducing bycatch is something the industry can tackle head on. Fishermen can adopt these practices quickly and companies that buy tuna can play a significant role too. They can ask their suppliers to use these best practices and encourage others to do the same. Can this method be reconciled with the need for sustainable fishing practices? Can technological advancements minimize bycatch while still allowing fishermen to effectively target bluefin tuna? Come with us to find out. 
Bluefin tuna farming, also known as tuna aquaculture, involves raising bluefin tuna in captivity for commercial purposes. Here's a simple explanation of how it's usually done. Tuna farms obtain juvenile bluefin tuna through the process of juvenile acquisition. Typically, these fish are obtained from hatcheries or the wild, where captive parents breed them. The young tuna, called juveniles or fingerlings, are raised in tanks on land or floating net pens until they are big enough to move to pens in the ocean. Once the tuna are a certain size, they are moved to large pens or cages in coastal waters or out at sea. These pens are usually made of strong netting and are anchored to the ocean floor. Tuna are fed a diet high in protein, usually made up of small fish like sardines, anchovies, or mackerel. Feeding is closely watched to ensure the tuna grows well and stays healthy. The water quality and environment are also carefully looked after. The tuna can grow to the right size for the market, which can take a few years depending on the farming conditions and market needs. When ready, they are harvested by hand or using special equipment like net pens or purse seines. The harvested tuna is processed and prepared to be sold to markets, restaurants, and other buyers. Bluefin tuna is prized for its tasty flavor and fatty meat and is popular in sushi and sashimi markets worldwide. Although bluefin tuna farming has challenges like dealing with disease, keeping the water clean, and managing environmental issues like waste, it also provides a way to produce seafood sustainably and lessen the strain on wild tuna populations. In aquaculture facilities, it is important to have a proper feeding schedule to make sure the fish grow and develop well. Ensure the fish get all the nutrients they need by giving them a balanced diet with proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals in the right amounts for their species and stage of life. Feed the fish multiple times a day so they get enough nutrients for growth and energy. How often you feed them depends on the type of fish, how big and old they are, and how they behave when they eat. choose the right type of food for your fish, like pellets, flakes, or granules, based on their size and how they eat. Using food that is easy to digest and tastes good helps the fish absorb more nutrients and grow faster. Keep an eye on how much food the fish eat compared to how much weight they gain. This helps you ensure they are using their food efficiently and not wasting any. Check how fast the fish are growing, the quality of the water they swim in, and the conditions around them to see if you need to change how much you feed them. Think about how warm the water is, how much oxygen is in it, and how fast it moves when you decide how much and how often to feed the fish. If you feed the fish too much or too little, they could get sick. To keep them healthy, feed them the right amount keep the water clean, and ensure they are safe from diseases. To help the fish grow well, ensure you have a good plan for feeding them. Keep an eye on how they are doing and make changes when needed. This will help your aquaculture business be successful and keep going for a long time. Fish farmers use various strategies and protocols to keep bluefin tuna healthy in aquaculture settings. It's important for the tuna to have good water quality. Farmers check water temperature, oxygen levels, pH, and ammonia and nitrite levels. They use advanced filtration systems to stabilize the water quality and ensure the fish aren't stressed. Farmers take strict measures to stop diseases from spreading. They check new fish, isolate sick ones, and clean equipment and facilities regularly. They also monitor the fish's health through visual inspections and tests to catch diseases early.
Bluefin tuna get special diets that help them grow. Farmers tailor feeding schedules to the fish's age, size, and health, watching how much they eat and how they act. They ensure the food is fresh and high quality to help the fish absorb nutrients better. Farmers create an environment that's like the fish's natural habitat. They add rocks or pipes to the pens to encourage the tuna to explore and act like they would in the wild. It is important to prevent stress by having enough fish in a pen and giving them enough space. Farmers may separate fish by size, move them to different pens, or limit how many fish are in each pen to keep things calm. Being gentle when handling and moving the fish helps keep them healthy. Farmers use special tools to move the tuna safely and ensure they aren't hurt or stressed during transportation. Farms have veterinarians who check on the fish regularly and give them medicine if needed. They might use vaccines or antibiotics under a vet's supervision to keep the fish healthy. Research helps farmers find better ways to care for tuna. By working with experts and government agencies, they can share knowledge and new ideas to improve the health and well-being of bluefin tuna. Fish farmers use these strategies and protocols to improve bluefin tuna stock's health, well-being, and productivity while supporting aquaculture operations sustainability and resilience. In aquaculture settings, vaccines and antibiotics are commonly used to help fish stay healthy and prevent diseases from spreading. Vaccines are given to fish to help their immune system recognize and fight off certain bacteria, viruses, or parasites. Aquaculture vaccines come in different forms, such as inactivated, live attenuated, subunit, and DNA. Each type has its own advantages and disadvantages. Fish can receive vaccines through injection, immersion, oral delivery via feed or bath vaccination, depending on the type of vaccine, fish species, and production system. Vaccinating fish helps to stop diseases from spreading, reduces the need for antibiotics, and promotes sustainable aquaculture by cutting down on treatments. Antibiotics treat bacterial infections in fish caused by pathogens like Vibrio, Aeromonas, or Streptococcus. Common antibiotic classes used in aquaculture include tetracyclines, fluoroquinolones, sulfonamides, and penicillins. Antibiotics are given to fish orally through medicated feed, water, or injection to stop bacteria from growing and help the fish's immune system fight the infection. They should be used carefully in aquaculture to prevent bacteria from becoming resistant to them and to follow rules about antibiotic use in food production. Withdrawal periods? After using antibiotics, fish need time for the medicine to leave their bodies before eating to ensure no harmful residues. Vaccines and antibiotics are important for keeping farmed fish healthy. Still, efforts are being made to use fewer antibiotics by improving how fish are managed, preventing diseases, and finding other ways to treat them, like probiotics, prebiotics, and immunostimulants. Bluefin tuna need specific nutrients to grow well and stay healthy in aquaculture. They need a protein-rich diet for muscle growth and overall body function. Fish meal and fish oil are good protein sources for tuna, giving them essential amino acids like lysine and methionine. Tuna also needs lipids and omega-3 fatty acids like EPA and DHA for cell health and immune function. Fish oil, fish meal, and vegetable oils provide these essential fatty acids for tuna. Even though bluefin tuna are carnivorous, they can use carbohydrates for energy. However, too many carbs can cause digestion problems. Tuna diets may have a moderate amount of wheat, corn, or soybean meal for energy. Tuna diets also have vitamins and minerals like A, D, E, and B complex, 
calcium, phosphorus, and selenium for bone health, immune function, and enzyme activity. Tuna may get antioxidants like vitamin C, E, and selenium to boost their immune system. These help fight stress and keep the fish healthy in aquaculture. Tuna feeds are made easy to digest and tasty so that the fish grow well. The ingredients are chosen and processed carefully to ensure the tuna gets nutrients. Tuna feed is always improving based on research and feedback. Feed makers work with experts to make diets that fit the needs of bluefin tuna at different stages of life. Aquaculture can help bluefin tuna grow well, use food efficiently, and make tuna farming more sustainable by giving it the right diet. Regarding bluefin tuna farming, the sourcing and composition of feed pellets play a crucial role in the operation's growth, health, and sustainability. Let's delve into these topics. The main sources of protein and lipids in bluefin tuna feed pellets are fish meal and fish oil. Fish meal comes from small pelagic fish such as anchovies, sardines, and mackerel, while fish oil is derived from oily fish species. Feed manufacturers are now sourcing fish meal and oil from responsibly managed fisheries and certified sustainable sources to tackle issues like overfishing and environmental impact. This includes fisheries approved by organizations like the Marine Stewardship Council or those following the International Fish Meal and Fish Oil Organization and responsible supply standards. In addition to marine sources, plant-based proteins like soybean meal, wheat gluten, and corn gluten supplement fish meal in tuna feed pellets. This shift reduces reliance on marine resources and brings potential environmental advantages. Bluefin tuna feed pellets are rich in protein, typically containing 40% to 60% on a dry matter basis. Proteins are essential for muscle growth, tissue repair, and metabolic functions. The lipid content, on the other hand, ranges from 10% to 20% and provides crucial fatty acids like omega-3 for brain development and immune health. Feed pellets are fortified with vitamins, A, D, E, and B complex, and minerals, calcium, phosphorus, and selenium, to meet the nutritional needs of bluefin tuna. Antioxidants such as vitamin C, E, and selenium are also added to boost immune function and combat oxidative stress. Feed manufacturers carefully choose and mix feed ingredients to give bluefin tuna a well-rounded and healthy diet that helps them grow, protects the environment, and supports the sustainability of aquaculture. Imitating the natural diet of wild bluefin tuna in captivity comes with various difficulties because of the complex and varied feeding habits and prey preferences. Wild bluefin tuna eat a wide range of prey, like small fish, squid, crustaceans, and planktonic organisms. However, captive diets usually use a limited number of ingredients, making it hard to match the nutritional variety of their natural diet. Wild bluefin tuna consume prey with different nutrients, such as proteins, fats, vitamins, and minerals. Captive diets must be carefully planned to provide balanced nutrients that meet the fish's growth, health, and reproduction needs. Bluefin tuna engage in behaviors like hunting, chasing prey, and exploring in their natural habitat. However, in captivity, they may not be able to do these natural activities, which can affect their physical and mental well-being. To tackle these challenges, a team effort is needed that combines knowledge of bluefin tuna behavior, nutritional needs, and care practices in captivity. Continuous research and advancements in aquaculture feeding methods, 
diet formulation and environmental stimulation are crucial for enhancing the welfare and sustainability of captive bluefin tuna farming. Having discussed the feeding and nutrition of bluefin tuna, we should contemplate these questions. How do farmers prevent diseases in bluefin tuna? What strategies and protocols are employed by fish farmers to maintain the health and welfare of bluefin tuna? Join us in the next chapter to discuss bluefin tuna's health and disease management. Bluefin tuna farming operations use advanced technology and specialized infrastructure to improve growth, health, and sustainability. For example, underwater monitoring systems with cameras and sensors observe fish behavior, feeding patterns, and environmental conditions in real time. This helps farmers adjust feeding schedules, identify stress or disease signs, and effectively manage water quality. Automated feeding systems deliver precise amounts of feed at specific times, reducing labor costs and ensuring consistent feeding. Some systems even use underwater cameras and sensors to monitor feeding behavior and adjust as needed. Water quality management systems maintain optimal conditions like temperature and oxygen levels, promoting a healthy environment for the fish and reducing the risk of disease outbreaks. Pens and cages are designed to withstand the marine environment and provide ample space for tuna to grow and swim comfortably. They may include features like predator deterrence, underwater lighting, and nets with different mesh sizes for fish safety. Veterinarians and aquaculture professionals use advanced tools to monitor fish health, detect diseases early, and provide appropriate treatment. Some farms invest in breeding programs to improve growth rate, disease resistance, and meat quality in farmed bluefin tuna. Nutritional experts create specialized feeds tailored to the dietary needs of bluefin tuna at different life stages, focusing on high-quality proteins, lipids, vitamins, and minerals from sustainable sources. Traceability systems track each fish from hatchery to harvest, ensuring product integrity and compliance with regulations. Quality assurance protocols maintain food safety, product quality, and sustainability certifications. By combining these technologies and infrastructure, bluefin tuna farming operations aim to increase efficiency, reduce environmental impact, and produce high-quality fish for global markets. Having discussed the technology and specialized infrastructure used in tuna farming, we should consider these questions. What are the nutritional requirements for bluefin tuna? What are the specialized diets formulated to support their growth in aquaculture settings? Join us in the next chapter as we talk about the feeding and nutrition of bluefin tuna. The intricate interplay between economics, culture, and gastronomy that shapes our perception of value and fuels our enduring fascination with the treasures of the sea. But what happens after it is bought? How is it prepared for the taste buds of enthusiasts around the world? Well, stick around to find out. The journey of bluefin tuna from the sea to your plates begins the moment it is hauled aboard a fishing vessel where meticulous handling and processing techniques are employed to preserve its freshness and flavor. Upon capture, the tuna is immediately bled to remove impurities and improve the quality of its flesh. Next, the fish is carefully gutted, cleaned, and packed in ice to maintain its pristine condition during transit to processing facilities or markets. Upon making it to the processing facilities, skilled artisans employ precision cutting techniques to divide the tuna into various cuts each prized for its unique flavor and texture.
Today, the most coveted cuts, such as the Otaro, Fatty Belly, and Chutaro, Medium Fatty Belly, command premium prices in culinary circles for their buttery richness and melt-in-your-mouth tenderness. The craziest part of the bluefin tuna is the fact that its culinary versatility knows no bounds, as it lends itself to a myriad of preparations ranging from simple sashimi to elaborate gourmet dishes. In fact, in traditional Japanese cuisine, bluefin tuna takes center stage as the star ingredient in sushi and sashimi, where its pristine flesh is showcased in its purest form without the need for elaborate seasonings or cooking techniques. However, beyond sushi bars and Japanese restaurants, bluefin tuna finds its way into a diverse array of culinary creations, from ceviche and crudo to tartare and tataki. Its firm yet tender flesh, coupled with its mild flavor profile and rich marbling, makes it a favorite among chefs seeking to push the boundaries of gastronomic innovation. The art of preparing and slicing bluefin tuna requires a delicate touch and keen attention to detail, as each cut must be executed with precision to showcase the fish's inherent qualities. Because of this, sushi chefs, known as itamai or shokunin, undergo years of rigorous training to master the art of knife work and achieve the perfect slice of bluefin tuna. Whether slicing sashimi with a razor-sharp yanagiba knife or crafting intricate nigiri with nimble fingers, Sushi chefs have elevated bluefin tuna into an art form, transforming it from a mere ingredient into a culinary masterpiece where each slice is a testament to the skill and dedication of the chef, as well as the purity and quality of the fish itself. While bluefin tuna is revered for its raw preparations, it also shines when cooked to perfection, Yes, from grilling and searing to roasting and braising, the versatility of bluefin tuna lends itself to a wide range of cooking methods that accentuate its natural flavors and textures. In fact, when serving cooked bluefin tuna, chefs often pair it with complementary ingredients and flavors to create harmonious culinary compositions. From citrusy ponzu sauce to savory miso glaze, the possibilities are endless allowing chefs to unleash their creativity and craft dishes that tantalize the taste buds and delight the senses. The crepes that we're later going to wrap uh, our langoustines in. Essentially, the journey of bluefin tuna from catch to table is a testament to the culinary mastery and reverence for quality that define the world of gastronomy. Whether enjoyed raw or cooked in traditional Japanese dishes or innovative culinary creations, bluefin tuna captivates the palate and ignites the imagination leaving a lasting impression on all who partake in its exquisite flavors and textures. Finally, it is time to look at the environmental impact of the bluefin tuna. How does it affect the world around us? And how do we affect the world around us? Over the past few decades, intensive fishing practices, driven by increasing global demand, have led to a drastic decline in bluefin tuna populations. This is because the relentless pursuit of this species, particularly the lucrative Atlantic bluefin tuna, Thonus thinus, has resulted in severe depletion of stocks. C. The bluefin tuna are slow to reproduce, making them particularly vulnerable to overexploitation. And to worsen the case, their migratory nature further complicates matters as they traverse vast oceanic expanses exposing them to fishing pressures across multiple jurisdictions. The worst part of it all is that the consequences of overfishing extend beyond the depletion of tuna populations, as bluefin tuna play a pivotal role in marine ecosystems because they are top predators, and as such, regulate the abundance of their prey and maintain the health of oceanic food webs. Today, their decline can disrupt these intricate ecological relationships, leading to cascading effects throughout the ecosystem. Moreover, the methods used for tuna fishing, such as longlining and purse seining, often result in bycatch inadvertently capturing other species, including endangered marine animals like sea turtles and sharks. As such, recognizing the urgent need to safeguard bluefin tuna populations and marine ecosystems, 
Holy surrogate mama mackerel, Batman! Scientists want to breed endangered tuna using the mackerel, but can it be done? Various conservation initiatives have been implemented globally. For example, international organizations such as the International Commission for the Conservation of Atlantic Tunas ITAT, have introduced quotas and regulations to limit fishing pressure and protect spawning grounds. Additionally, measures such as size limits and seasonal closures aim to ensure the sustainability of tuna stocks and minimize bycatch. But that's not all, as advancements in technology have facilitated monitoring and enforcement efforts. Today, satellite tracking systems enable authorities to monitor fishing vessels in real time, ensuring compliance with regulations and deterring illegal fishing activities. Collaborative research initiatives have also enhanced our understanding of bluefin tuna behavior and migration patterns, enabling more targeted conservation strategies. Sadly, despite concerted conservation efforts, achieving sustainable fishing practices remains a formidable challenge, as economic incentives often drive overfishing and the high market value of bluefin tuna creates strong incentives for exploitation. Illegal, unreported, and unregulated IUU fishing only makes matters worse as it exacerbates the problem, undermining conservation measures and perpetuating unsustainable practices. Furthermore, the transboundary nature of tuna fisheries complicates governance and enforcement efforts. This is because disparities in regulatory frameworks and enforcement capacities among nations create loopholes that can be exploited by unscrupulous actors. As such, effective management of tuna stocks requires international cooperation and coordination, yet achieving consensus among diverse stakeholders with competing interests poses significant hurdles. Moreover, addressing the root causes of overfishing necessitates addressing broader socioeconomic factors, such as poverty and food security which drive reliance on unsustainable fishing practices in some regions. Today, implementing alternative livelihoods and promoting sustainable fishing practices requires long-term investment and collaboration across sectors. In the end, the ecological consequences of bluefin tuna fishing underscore the urgent need for concerted action to balance conservation with sustainable practices. Although in recent times progress has been made through conservation measures and technological advancements, formidable challenges remain, as achieving sustainable tuna fisheries requires a multifaceted approach encompassing effective governance, international cooperation, and socio-economic development initiatives. In the end, the story of the bluefin tuna is a story of delicacy, tradition, and utmost care, as fishers around the world work tirelessly to provide the world with the most intricate and delicious of all underwater creatures.